Hey, everyone. Welcome. Hey, hey. We have a special introduction today. H hello. Welcome to Wednesday. Happy huddle. Woo! All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Love it. Somebody has to do it. We got to take advantage of our special helpers here today. <laughs> he did good. Good job. For sure. Uh, different format tonight? Yeah, it's different. Different. Anybody want to take a shot at explaining? I mean, we're here because... <laughs> <laughs> she said no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely heard from the Lord, right? For sure. Yeah. For sure. Amen. That's why, that's the only reason we're here. Right. <laughs> so it's the huddle, but yes. live. Live, but live in the chapel. So if you. With a live studio audience. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Give it up for yourselves for being in the we chapel. We need the yes. signs that tell you all the reactions. Right. <laughs> that is the opposite direction we of trust, where we're trying we to We trust go. you guys. We trust you guys. <laughs> No, but we're switching up the huddle a little bit. We're going to be meeting in person here at the chapel, but obviously also online because it's challenging on Wednesday nights for everyone to get here every single Wednesday after work and driving and that sort of thing. Obviously, we have a couple more weeks of school, but then um, hopefully some of our school kids, it'll be easier on parents to get here. Um, but yeah, so instead of classes for the next, at least for the month of May, I would say, yeah. is our test month. It's like a test balloon. Yeah. We're going to be having prayer right here in the chapel after this, and yes. that will also be live streamed. So instead of jumping into class, you can just dim your lights at home and turn up the prayer music. We are super excited about our prayer music because yeah. uh, Heath and Pastor Jay have been working on some incredible stuff. Uh, you might notice that the music playing, I don't know, today, maybe? Maybe not. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I think you're breaking protocol here. Okay. <laughs> well, just, you're just be watching. You're pulling Phillips on them. Just be watching for something. So anyway, we're going to dive in. That look was... We're gonna and we're going to finish in 27 minutes and 30 seconds right there. <laughs> they get to keep the train on track tonight. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the purpose in this experiment is uh, in line with just the other day, uh, when Dr. Willis was here, I led you in a brief, uh, what would we call it, just reemphasizing our, our identity statement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Bishop Phillips taught me um, that there is very limited value in certain trigger words that we would typically use to describe ourselves. They do have value, mostly to us. We are an apostolic church. We know what that means, but inside of uh, the Christian world, that actually has a broad array of meetings. For instance, there are uh, Syrian Orthodox Christians, which are, are closer to the, the Catholic side of things than, than, than the Pentecostal side of things, and they would describe themselves as apostolic, and their reasons are just as legitimate. They're just different. Ours have to do with the doctrine of the apostles. Theirs have to do with a record going back of a succession of, of their bishops. So that's got usage, but for us, we know that a lot of us know that what we mean by that is we take a very, very, um, we take a very serious approach to wanting to build the church that Jesus and the 12 we're building in the first century. Um, and we believe there is power in the name of Jesus. And we believe that um, a, a, a certain amount of leaven um, from the pagan world got in uh, on how we describe the one true and living God of Israel. So uh, the modern term for, for people with our view would be apostolic or oneness, Pentecostals, that kind of thing. But a more useful terminology might be that we are biblical or Hebrew monotheists. We believe God is who everybody since Abraham has believed God is. Um, there hasn't been perfect understanding ever because guess what? He's God. 
Uh, all of these things can help us, but when we're describing ourselves to those outside, they don't do much. Saying apostolic, Pentecostal, all those kinds of words really just tell other people that they're not in whatever club this is. So we don't have a whole lot of use for that externally facing. So how do we describe ourselves? And even these things need a certain amount of explanation to be useful. But an identity statement we're using is we are a spirit-filled and spirit-led church with a high view of Scripture. Um, that goes a long way toward providing a backbone to explain to people how we see our faith. Uh, the expanded version of that just says we are a faith family. This is the next sentence, a faith family of believers united by covenant in Christ, governed by the Holy Bible, and motivated by love. But where we're really wanting to go on Wednesday nights has to do with our vision and our mission statements. So uh, these are all on our website. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Yeah, you. I was just going to say you can read along on the website. Yeah, yeah, on the about page, uh, who we are. And we're working on the wording, but uh, we see Promised Land as a church chosen by God to raise up an army of Holy Spirit empowered witnesses of Jesus Christ in preparation for his coming kingdom. Amen. That's what we believe the vision is. And then we just expand on that by saying each believer must be matured into their ministry and deployed to carry the gospel to every place on earth beginning at Austin. That's why we say things like we are global citizens of the local church, that kind of thing. We have a broader context that we're involved in. And then our mission, we must offer every living person the opportunity to become a disciple of Jesus Christ and to partner with his purpose in the earth. In order to do that, we're going to have to be filled with his spirit, baptized into his family, and uh, trained up in his ways. But how are we going to raise up that army? That army is going to have to be involved in, we're, we're going to have to practice with live ammunition at some point. We're going to have to quit playing with Nerf guns and and, you know, it's the, we've got to have somewhere that we can practice his presence and by reason of use have our senses exercised. So that would be the goal of taking the huddle live. Uh, we're not looking to build a massive audience here. We're actually looking to just assemble a, a group that is all in for being and making disciples. Some of you have been so long in this thing that there's little to nothing that I can tell you that you don't already know, but I need you to help me tell the next generation. I need you to help me give input and guidance and gentle correction and love when that needs to be done and public praise and all of those things. And then just during the week, walk with some people that are, are beginning to to try out their, their gifts. So that's what we're wanting to see the Lord accomplish. We want to do a little teaching and, and kind of uh, preparation in the huddle. And then we want to go into just praying. We want to pray. There'll be, there'll be guidance on the board, but it's not even going to be like first Monday. We're not going to be up here, you know, really speaking into that part of it. We're just going to pray together. We're going to ask God to come down and breathe on this army, breathe on these slain, put us back together, bind our wounds, lift our spirits and breathe life into us. And then on first Wednesday, we're going to come in with a shared goal, shared purpose to worship until we're in his presence and then in his presence minister one to another vessel pouring into vessel uh one has a psalm one has a song one has a spiritual uh song one has a, a word a, a scripture one has a word of encouragement one has uh, a little bit of of reproof or direction or and we begin to learn to move in the gifts of the spirit and under the anointing of the holy ghost the body ministering to the body so that we become the full man of Christ that we were created to be. 
which we have to be in this hour. There is no more time. There is no more time. This is the time. Yes. Amen. 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 And Pastor, you want to kick us off with, if you have any comment or anything, but if you want to otherwise kick us off with starting to read, and we're going to read a little bit in 1 Corinthians 12, if that's okay. So you want to do KJV? Uh, I'm in KJV because I'm in an app that um, that works well. For, in fact, son, would you <laughs> come make another guest appearance? Bring me this Bible. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're so good at that. That's also King James. Look at God. I have a whole NASB and you brought me my King, James. King James. I guess the Lord wants me in King James tonight. Sorry. So I don't know what you're going to be in. You do whatever. I'm just doing that for my app. No worries. So we can uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And this is the Apostle Paul. And he's giving some apostolic instruction to the church. And we understand and we know that these are letters yes. written to the church at Corinth. And so there was a specific group of believers back at home who had been inundated and experiencing the baptism of the Spirit. And so now it's like, what do we do with it? So Paul, being a good father, a good apostolic father in the faith, is now writing a letter saying, let me give you some instruction. Let me, even though I'm not there among you, I want to make sure that you understand what's happening to give you a little bit of understanding. Um, starting at verse 1, now concerning spiritual gifts. I'm reading in NSB, NASB. Brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to the mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Mm. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. My, my, varieties. Can we just, like, stop there, I yeah, guess? Yeah, let's, let's stop there. There are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. I don't know, like, what, what jumps out at you from that verse? I've talked a bunch. Someone else go first. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, that's me if under you the don't bus. have anything, it's a theologian. Uh, I always find it interesting in Scripture, especially when Paul writes. Um, he always uses kind of a leading term. Now, something preceded that. Now, right? Like there was a need for what's coming. Right. You know, you kind of alluded to that. There That's was good. a need. There was a dire need for them to understand what now. Um, and I think it, it is especially important to know what stood out. I want you to be aware. And I think there's a lack of awareness in not only the church now, but even in the generation now and in the generation coming of spiritual gifts. Like, what do we do now? Like, we're in now we're in a lot of churches, there are experiences. Mm -hmm. And then it's, now, what do we do with this? What do we, what do, we do with these things? Yes. And how do we receive these things? This is weird, I've never experienced this. I've never had this opportunity or felt this way or you know, something happened to me and I don't know what to do with it. Um, and so this was, at, so I think it's important to point out that like where the Church of Corinth was at this point is where we are now. Right. That's good. It is very, very much where we are now. Um, so I think we can actually, and this is not an easy thing to do sometimes in scripture, especially when it's been written so long ago, where you can actually really put yourself in scripture at this point where we are today is where the church in Corinth was when Paul wrote this letter to them. Reiterate that connection because that's really good. And if somebody didn't see that sneaking up, they might have missed that. Put us back in that moment where you drew the, the analogy between where Corinth was when Paul wrote this to them and where we are now. Sure. Um, obviously, like I said, the, the now, right? Like always something proceeds, you know, before there is a now in scripture. Yeah. There was a need, right? There was a need for the church in Corinth to know 
what spiritual gifts were, and it was a need for them to be aware, right? And there's a lot of, of depth in that aware because in the time there, there was obviously something, this was a common thing now. This was happening, it was spreading. This was, this is Asbury, this is uh, what was happening at Asbury. You know, this is, there's an awakening. There's, yes. there's something going on and people are receiving the spirit and it's happening so readily. And we are not sure what to do with this. And Paul sees a need to say, hey, like, it's time for you to be aware. I would not have you to be unaware, oh. right? So like I said, at this point, this is where we are as a church, as, the, as a universal church, as a church body, right? There's no mistaking that over the last year and a half in this church, there's been a movement of God, right? right? right. There are people in this church that have been here for years who have had experience in that. There is a need to even know in that experience that we are in a different now. Right. So like I want us to really understand that there is application for the body of Christ today to place yourself right now in First Corinthians chapter 12, right. because this is where we are now. And there is an extreme need that the God needs us to not to, for us to be aware. There's no excuse for us at this point in this move to continue to be unaware of what the Spirit of God wants us to do in this season. Same place that Corinth was in, same place that we are in right now. That is That's so good. good. That's great. And I love how you said Paul, the way he writes, is a leading statement. So if we, let's rewind back just one verse. There it is. There it is. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So he's qualifying what's going to take place or what they're experiencing. Right. Mm -hmm. So he says, what you're observing, mm -hmm. if somebody is saying Jesus is accursed, you know that is not the Spirit that's talking. We don't recognize that voice. That's a different spirit altogether. Right. However, if no one is able to say that Jesus is Lord, unless the Holy Spirit is in an operation, right. then he qualifies it even further and says, now mm -hmm. there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. So it may not look like what your grandmother's church looked like. It may not look like what the church across the street quite looks like. Right. But there is a variety of spiritual gifts. And our pastor has already said on first Monday, what should we be praying for right now, church? Sure. Discernment. Yeah. We want to, like, know God, know yes. his voice. And he gave such a wonderful analogy of saying, maybe when I first met my wife, you might have told me something that I might have been like, mm, okay. Mm -hmm. But now, 20 plus years in, mm -hmm. I may not have heard what she said, but I know her heart. Right. And I, I know faith. that doesn't sound like her. Yeah, so I, I can had faith in her. Correct. At that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I believed in her. But I believe her now. Right. Right. It's good. Such a difference. Yeah. I believe her. I, it's, you know, that phrase, believe her. Well, I'm sorry. I may get canceled for this, but I don't. Because not just any old her, I, I, I want to be, I want to judge righteous judgment. Right. So I have to be able to slow it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if both things can be true at the same time. We have run over top of many women in our society because we wouldn't listen to what they were saying. Right. Right. Two wrongs don't make a right. I'm not going to turn around and start stoning men <laughs> because... Somebody, we, listen, that's acting like human nature doesn't exist. The, the solution is not to create another problem. So I don't just believe her as in any her. I'm going to honor her. I'm going to respect her enough to look into it and make judge righteous judgment. But when it comes to this her, I do believe her because I know her. For I, and I've been knowing her yeah. for a long time now. So you would, you would be very hard pressed to shake my faith yeah. 
in her. You, you would need to come at me with some, some very, very compelling evidence. And I think that's important to know, and I love what you said, Pastor Jay, this is also like a qualifying statement for the body. Because obviously, if he has to qualify the things that he just said in these first few verses, there's obviously some false, falseness, some falsehood, some foolishness out there that's happening that is being perceived to be something that it's not. So it is very much a need for discernment. And that's why Paul has presented this letter to the church in Corinth. Amen. Yeah. I something? think, too, that you could take it very practical and be like, well, so if someone's not cursing Jesus, then their spirit is good. And if they are cursing Jesus, their spirit is bad, right? But I think it's crucial. How do we know those who labor among us? Mm. How do we know? by the fruit that we see them bearing, but by the them. life that we see them living, by the alignment that we see with the word of God. That's discerning, that's, I mean, you said it at First Monday, so much at First Monday. Um, no, I mean like in a good way. <laughs> but uh, now I forgot what I was gonna say. We have to know the word. How are we gonna know if what people are saying aligns with the word if we don't know the word? How do we know if they're showing the fruit if we don't know what the fruit is or what to be looking for? That's how you test the spirit. And that's how when someone tells you something that doesn't sound like the person they're saying it about, you can test their spirit. Well, is this something that's edifying to the body of Christ? Is this something building up the church? Is this something, in, and does this even align with their character and with who I know them to be as a fellow believer and a fellow part of the body? Test and see. Some of discernment is spiritual and in our mind, and some of it is common sense because we know the word. That's a whole word right That's there. That's a bar. That is a I love it. Mind, mind. So I, I really, um, I, there's a deep uh, mind here. We, we're just scraping the, the side of the, the vein. We're scraping the side of the ore. Brother Tim, uh, maybe two years ago, uh, we went to lunch and you were expressing uh, something that I hear from a lot of people in uh, your generation, a, 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 an extreme sense of, of um, uh, unrest because I, I was put on this earth to do something. God hasn't taken me home, but it feels like we're not getting traction. Well, I want to encourage you uh, where we started here, we opened, I mean, 1 Corinthians 12 is kind of your, your uh, wheelhouse. And that day at that lunch, I asked you, what is your mission statement? Why, why do you exist? What, what, what is your ministry? And you said, do your gift. Do your gift. That's, that's what God has sent me for, is to tell people, do your gift. You can. Here's how. Here's some of the ones that are available. Um, and I, I told you that day, your time is coming. Your time is coming because we're, we are at the brink of the rules for refuge, the, everything that we've talked about for all these years. Well, that has shifted. It's here. And that's really, I think, what we're going to get out of this tonight. And this is very... Um, this is kind of Talmudic, the way that we've just uh, studied this, because basically what has happened is we said, we're going to start in 1 Corinthians 12 and see how far we get. And what we got is now, <laughs> now, now concerning spiritual gifts. Now, there's, a, there's such a well there. We'll have to talk uh, all, th all through these coming weeks. Um, because there's more than one category of gifts that are talked about in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, at least three categories of gifts. Um, but they are all supplied by the same Spirit, moving in different ways through different vessels. But uh, Pastor Randon stopped us, just hit the brakes on the now. And he said, Paul's a fan of this word now, and I actually had clocked the now 
Pastor Jay, when you said, well, let's back up and look at the verse before the now, I had clocked the now and the verse before that. Because what we read is 1 Corinthians 12, 1, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away, un by the way, just want to point out, past tense, ye were Gentiles. There is not a Gentile in this room that believes on Jesus. Don't ever let anybody tell you. There is no such thing as a church, uh, a Gentile church. There's the church among the Gentiles, but there is no Gentile church. There's a Gentile harvest. But when you come in and you are brought into, you are grafted in, this is the commonwealth of Israel, which I'm very glad for because my people were cut off. So my only way back in is to be grafted into you. Thank God he's a root and he, right. he stands. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. That is to be unlearned or whether it is unlearned or just foolish, but for either reason, I would not have you be ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto idols that have nothing to say, even as ye were led. You were sheep, you were in the matrix, you were in the system, and then there's the, the, the now, I give you, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and no man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. So you took us back to, hey, nobody can call Jesus accursed if they're speaking by the Spirit, and nobody can call him Lord but by the Holy Ghost. And I'm going back to the now before that, 12 and 1, now concerning spiritual gifts. It's very interesting that this follows 1 Corinthians 11 where God hit the emergency brake on us in the last year and said, I'm, you can't graduate from this because we have not yet retaken from the enemy the Lord's Supper. We have to be able to eat without bitterness. We have to be able to eat without division. We have to be able to eat without factionalism. We have to be able to eat without unforgiveness, all of these things. So we haven't practiced the Lord's Supper in a little while. I don't know if you know this, that's a very extreme step for a church to take. We have deliberately withheld ourselves from the table for just a little while so that we can make sure that when we come together and do it again, we are truly, because Paul said, if you don't do it right, it's not the Lord's Supper and it won't have that impact. So we want to get it right. And so Paul has just finished telling them, he's just cleaned their clock about the Lord's Supper. And he said, I can't even brag on you because of how messed up you are on it. And he said, get this stuff straight and the rest I'll fix when I get there. Now, 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 concerning spiritual gifts, I wouldn't have you ignorant. In other words, I'm not going to leave you without teaching until I get there because this is something we've got to be practicing together. So I want to point out to us that many will say to him, Lord, Lord, and yet he's not their Lord. So that's not what we mean here. What we mean here is what my wife and co-pastor said a moment ago, no man speaking by the Holy Spirit can call Jesus accursed and no one can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. We're talking about in my life. We're talking about the fruit that you see in me. If you see good fruit, if you see his lordship at work in my life, you can rest assured that is not the spirit of Shul's Hirsch. That is the spirit of Jesus Christ. And it may look different, it may sound different, it may operate different than it does through you, but it is the same spirit. That's what he wants us to know. He said, you're all here because you all are manifesting the lordship of Jesus. And I want you to know that means you have the same spirit. So there are differences, diversities, the King James says diversities of gifts but the same spirit and there are 
differences of administration. That just means it's going to operate different. So you may have the same gift I have. Some of us will, but it won't operate the same way. It will be administrated differently, but it is the set apart spirit of the living God that makes us that way. And that word, pneumaticos, if you go look it up, it is the breath. It is the wind. So that's why we have asked you, invited you to join us tonight. If you're with us online, thank you so much. If you made it in house, wow. I am blown away on a, on a Wednesday night in one of the toughest traffic cities in the world. So we're not going to waste one minute of our prayer time. We're going to go into this right now. We're going to fire it up and begin to pray in the spirit at, at the, when the hour strikes, we're just going to hug each other's necks and go home. We are going to pray for the next 30 minutes. Lord, give me earnestly desire the best gifts, earnestly desire the best gifts. That means the most useful. God, give me the gift most useful for your purpose in my life. Come on, somebody. I'm so proud of you for being here. Let's go into prayer. Let's go into prayer. Let's ask him to pour out his spirit again on us. Let's ask him to breathe pneumaticos on us. And let's ask him to vest in us the most useful gift for our calling. Let's pray, 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 and then let's be pushing together to come together on first Wednesday and go into worship and then watch those gifts begin to operate. In Jesus' name.